movements, and it's on a massive scale, but then transitioning from that into the combat, which is quite focused and close. Like, what challenges do you have to overcome in that transition there? It's really hard. Um, <laughs> I'll let Ryan, because he's a lot smarter than me, answer it. Well, I don't know. It actually depends a lot on our animation team. Right. Like our animation team does it so much for our transitions and missions, either getting into them or um, even just beats in the mission, right, between a combat setup and the next traversal challenge. So a lot of animation, a lot of design work goes into that, too, um, making some of our levels designed so that you can load into them smoothly. Spider-Man. I mean, this is what I'm here for. Oh. Look at that. Traversal is so, I mean, how did you approach this? Because this is, this is what everyone wants, isn't it? That experience of swinging through New York with Spider-Man. It's such an iconic and crucial facet of, of feeling like you're Spider-Man. Yeah, it was, it was the first thing we started working on. Yeah. Immediately, once we got this project going, started working on Traversal. We knew it had to be physics-based. It had to start with webs attaching to buildings. Mm -hmm. So that was super, super important. Um, from there, it was just finding what felt right, um, making sure that we were helping the player get around things and over things in a really fast and acrobatic way, um, making sure that all the animations that connect you, again, are looking amazing. Um, and yeah, it just took a ton of work to find all the different places and, and things that you wanted to do, like the fire escapes that Jacinda's team needed on, on the buildings. We didn't have those initially, like, we didn't have those initially, right? It's just square buildings, because it's a test level, right? But then once we looked at what does New York actually look like, there had to be fire escapes. Yeah, that was definitely one of the challenges that we had, that we wanted to make sure that it's like a superhero playground. Yeah. So you have to be able to traverse on the ceilings, like walls, the ground. Um, so if you guys play a demo, you should definitely check it out because every single uh, square foot of New York City is traversable. Fantastic. And how did you strike that balance between uh, first creating a New York that is authentic and looks like New York, but at the same time, I guess you've got to make it a place that is fun for Spider-Man to move around. So did you take any artistic liberties with certain places just to make them more fun to swing through? And <laughs> you know, for the most part, it's fairly accurate to what New York City would actually be. Um, we actually did make some buildings a little bit taller because you do need a certain amount of height to swing from a building. But because we actually have web attachments, like for example, you can actually swing through Central Park, um, the trees are a little bit higher and there's probably a lot more trees than you would expect. Um, but that's how we made um, the city a little bit more easy to traverse. Awesome. What about bringing Spider-Man to life? Because even on the streets, the movements, we get a little bit of this, a little bit of a joke. Yeah, so um, we went, when we started working on this project, one thing we talked about was we wanted, you know, New York is a character for us, right? It's its own character. And part of that is the, the, how, li how lively it is. You know, we want to have a lot of cars, a lot of vehicles, a lot of people. But it'd be weird if he just didn't interact with them. So, you know, he can, you know, instead of punching them, he'll like salute or wave. And then some characters you can actually interact with, like we can do high fives. Oh, really? We can take a little selfie with them and everything. So, yeah, I mean, we want to, we want it to be a, a, even though he swings a lot, there are going to be players who are going to go down the ground, and we want to have opportunities where they, you, can, you can interact with the NPCs. They'll also like run away if there's a crime nearby. Um, they'll sometimes clap and uh, be happy when you uh, succeed. Um, it's just one of those things that, like I said, New York was really important for us to get right, not only just the look and the feel, but also just the, how alive it is. Yeah. I mean, it this is just fantastic. It's like, this is what everyone's what Rob hasn't stopped talking about. This is what I've always wanted. I just want to swing around. But now I'm like, maybe I just want to be on the ground. It's, uh, it was, it's been a, a dream project for a lot of us in Somnex. So um, to see it, I just want to grab a controller and play it. I want to Why, quite frankly. Yeah, I, it's just this, uh, this screen is pretty amazing. Yeah, I think it is being played uh, live at the moment. It's just, yeah, yeah. I just wanted you guys to be able to tell us all about the game instead. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, and this is, like I said, you know, one thing about this is like, so uh, Adam just completed what we call a Fisk base. Um, there's a bunch of these different uh, Fisk um, installments out in the city, and as you complete these open world activities, you'll, you'll earn these tokens, and you okay. can spend the tokens to customize your Spider-Man. We always want you to be the Spider-Man that you want to be, so Ooh. you can unlock new suits, new suit powers, suit mods, new gadgets, okay. and upgrade those along the way, so. Can we get some examples? Sure. So um, you see the uh, little icon in the top right-hand corner is what's called the Web Blossom. Yep. So that's actually a suit power that you can unlock. And do you remember in the, 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 um, the first combat room from Raph, he does that big twirly thing and the webs go everywhere? Yep. That's the Web Blossom. It's like a super move. Oh, cool. And each, most of the suits actually come with 
a, um, a suit power, and you actually can um, mix and match them. So say if you like, you know, our Noir suit, but you want Web Blossom, you can take that and place it on there, or, you know, whatever the Iron Spider suit comes with, you can take that and place it on there, so. Can you change yeah. on the fly, or do you have to go to? We have to go, you have to go to the venue yeah. to, to change it, but, um, and then that, and now, like, for example, he has this web shooter attached. You can upgrade the web shooter to have um, more more shots, faster reload, and then same thing for a bunch of our gadgets. And, like, like that's, look at that New York City. I think that's, it's like, I was like, behold, the power of the PS4. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's right there. I mean. What was this, and the applause from the audience. Good job. That is incredible. Yeah, it's by far the biggest game yeah. we've ever made. And uh, yeah, that's still a guilty pleasure of mine because I like to just climb to the highest buildings yeah. and just do a swan dive. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It feels awesome. Yeah, so like yeah. they're actually playing, the, the demo is actually only a very small small portion of the playable area in, this, in the city. So um, we have multiple districts and this is really basically one district with maybe a couple corners of others, but it's, it's a massive world. And so how do you bring a massive world to life with activities then? Because, okay, swinging around is fun, but we want to do stuff in that world too. Brian, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at, I'm letting well, all the hard ones to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> no, we have a lot of different activities that are uh, in the world. There's, I mean, in this demo, there's actually our research stations. Everything that comes from, everything comes with a story reason for it. Um, there's also our dynamic crime system. There's that web blossom we were talking about. Um, that you can see they're stuck in there now inside that little uh, coven. Um, but yeah, so the dynamic crime system is there all the time. Um, and so you actually earn the tokens uh, through that and then put those back in your upgrades. Um, and then as you go through the story, different other activities unlock across the world. Um, yeah. So. yeah, that's kind of one of the cool things about the city is that it's constantly evolving, you know? Yeah. yeah. The citizens evolve, uh, the activities evolve as the story evolves. She's actually pointing out something. So another thing is actually, yeah. at certain points, they'll actually, the, the, uh, the, MP, the people in the world will actually point out things that you can do, like they pointed to an activity in the world, so. And off you go. Off you go. Yeah. And Peter Parker has been Spider-Man for eight years. Yeah, this That's game. Right. What was behind the decision to make him a more experienced Spider-Man? So I think it, you know, we, when we were, early on we were talking about the story and the kind of story we wanted to tell. You know, we knew right away we didn't want to do an origin story because people told us pretty quickly they don't want origin stories. And, you know, coincidentally, the, the studio side was doing the younger Spider-Man, which is a great... So we thought, what would be a good time in his life to explore? And I just remember back when I, after I graduated college, what life was like. It's like that, and you're finally an adult now. You're paying your own bills, you have a job for the first time, you're trying to make a name for yourself. So we just thought that would be a good opportunity to... Um, explore for Peter, and you're, they're so accessible to people who aren't the hardest core fans, right? Um, so we worked really hard with, whether it's design, art, character, UI, to make sure, and the story, you, to Yuri? make sure that we're educating Come people who Yuri Watanabe is, um, even who Aunt May is, or Martin Lee, aka Mr. Negative. We want to make sure that whether it's actually in the game, whether you're playing a mission, or even you're going through our UI, that we educate you on who these people are, because we can't assume that everybody knows the characters like we do, right? Um, that's just unfair, because um, uh, we just, our job is to know who these characters are, right? But I think um, we want to make sure that it, is, it has a level of accessibility. I think everything we do, whether it's swinging, combat, um, um, upgrading his character, and then our story and our lore, there's a level of accessibility to it. We really want, we want as many people to play this as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what, you know, the comics and the movies do really, really well. Yeah, and I was going to say, too, like, um, in Marvel stories, like, first and foremost, all of the characters are human, yeah. right? Who just happen to have extraordinary things happen to them or happen to have extraordinary abilities. Um, and that's what we're telling here. We're telling a human story. And I think that um, players who even, if they're not Spider-Man fans, will find the story very relatable. So. I totally agree. Like, I think I mean, that was the biggest thing we said. As much as it's an awesome superhero fantasy, it has to be a human story. And I think that... We want it to be a, a, a great, interesting story, even if you didn't have the superhero. That's just, you know, that's the layer we put on top. And it's, like I said, it's much of a Peter Parker story as it is a yeah. superhero, uh, as, a, as a Spider Man story. I think the other thing is that we worked really close with Marvel to find out the identity of those characters, like really what, what defines that character, and then work from that in our universe. That's yep. something Brian and uh, Bill Roseman and Marvel worked on really long. Yeah, I, the, the one thing to remember is this is not based on the movie or it's not based on a particular comic story. It's our own Spider-Man universe and the, 
kind of the, the mantra was we want to respect the traditions of the franchise, but we also want to don't be afraid to mix things up. Yeah. So, um, like for example, in our world, he's up up into this game, Wilson Fisk has been the big bad. Like it's all about taking down Wilson Fisk, and then once he's out, it opens the door to new threats. So. Um, and the great thing working with Marvel is they've been so open to pretty much everything. And there's some really big things in the game that we haven't revealed yet that I think are going to surprise a lot of people that they were like, they went for that. And people like Bill and Eric and, and Mike, they've been um, unbelievable collaborators on this, along with Sony. And it's, it's quite amazing that you've been, you've been given the freedom to create your own Spider-Man universe. Can you remember, like, I don't know if you can pinpoint a specific moment, but the first day you guys worked on this game and you knew you were going to be creating your own Spider-Man universe. What? <laughs> I mean, his character is beloved by so many people. And then you just break down what is, what's really important about the character. Um, there's so many people at the, on the team that are so love the character. What are the common things we all love about him? And then it's just a really great collaboration between us, and, us Sony, and Marvel. And, it, um, and it also at the same time, I think that one thing I feel like in the last year or so that's really made this game feel really special is that it feels like an insomniac game right like yeah. it um i remember reading an article a little while back about like it was like the eight things we want to see from spider-man and one of them was a uh, i want to see insomniac dna part of it so like if you look at his suit powers his gadgets the humor it feels like an insomniac game so um i think it's one of the things i'm most proud of uh, working on this so i mean again it's up all thanks to the team and all the work they do i mean they they make it pretty special <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about the combat since we're seeing it because it's not just it, it's the way he's using the environment as well you know we were ripping off car doors at one point now we're pulling like uh, shells down on people it's incredibly it's a really expansive fighting system yeah, I mean, right. making him an acrobatic improviser was one of the first sort of touchstones of the combat system. Um, getting a lot of webs in there and using the environment were two key things. And it took us a while to get all the web action we could get, like the swing kick that Adam just did was something that we had to sort of discover along the way. Um, but the, we found out the more webs you have, the more unique Spider-Man can feel. Um, getting him really acrobatic, so um, the dodging, the leaping, and going into the air is another really important thing for Spider-Man that lets us I love that one, sorry, a little air finisher there. And there's our weapon wheel. Bring that weapon wheel up, when we finally got that in the game, it was like, wow, that's an insomniac. It feels like coming home insomniac. is an insomniac, you know? Yeah. So. We're seeing some of them in action now. And you know, like, for us, you know, um, you know, our experience with Sunset Overdrive gave us a leg up on, on getting Traverse up and running, but for us, for, for, for combat, it was just something new. It was something we hadn't really done a big third-person uh, action game, like you, me melee-based. So it took a little while, but I would say, I mean, a big hats off to the combat team because they really embrace the character and whether it's the design, the gameplay, the gameplay programming team, the, the animation, um, and then just our character and rigging team, um, basically the entire studio. Everybody. Uh, everybody. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, everybody. So really, I mean, that's the thing. It, it really, I wouldn't think about Insomniac. It's such a collaborative team and effort. So nice and that, idea. Uh, it wouldn't be possible without that. So to finally see it all kind of gel and come together um, is, is pretty awesome. Like one of my favorite days at the studio was when we had Pretty much everybody represented. We even had, we had UI there, everybody, and we were talking about different suit powers and different gadgets. And it was like, I remember walking out of there and telling Ted, our president CEO, going, this is one of the best meetings I've been in in 10 years of working at the company. Wow. So it's just, it's what makes Insomniac pretty special. Then that's what goes back to what you said. It feels like your game. Yeah. And that's why. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah that makes me, hearing that, just, yeah, big old smile on my face. Puts a smile on our face, too. Yeah. That's how it should do. This, I'm sorry, I'm just watching the comments. Okay. absolutely <laughs> mesmerized. You're more than welcome to watch. I'm like, we can shut up and just watch it. I know. <laughs> right. Now, this has been absolutely incredible. I guess this was like a side mission we picked up? Yeah, so basically this was an inner demon base that, um, so after you take down Wilson Fisk, um, a new gang comes into town, the inner demons, and they have different installments throughout. And basically what you're doing, you're clearing these suits are really important to people. Like, Yes. Really yeah. important. <laughs> yeah. um, we've heard all the requests. And, um, you're and, like, yeah. yeah. And uh, Gavin, if you're out there, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Gavin's our lead character artist. And um, it just it, having that, um, that kind of that carrot to kind of customize your, your Spider-Man how you want him to do. And the trait is that however you look in the, um, like when you're playing, if you go to a cutscene, he's wearing that outfit. So it's, That's what I like. You know, yeah. That's what yeah, I, I was like. going to say, it was kind of funny because um, there's... Suit. And he'll just do his come on, like, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And, you know, then I'm emailing Marvel going, so, <laughs> dot, 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 and they usually give a thumbs up. So it, it's just all of us kind of 
fulfilling a, a dream that we've wanted for a long time. And, and, the, and when you see the other suits in the game, they look so damn good. Like, yeah. uh, like just the, the materials and everything just it's so good. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm most excited about, and I, I, I can't wait for fans to play the game and check out how many <laughs> suits there are. Um, people have been tweeting us forever and asking for all these suits, and I wish I could tell you what they were, but you guys yeah. are going to have your minds blown when yeah. you actually... there's a lot of suits. I mean, I, I would quite happily right now just take this demo and just see what I could find in it, but maybe I wouldn't get that lucky. Uh, it says focus bar full. Tell me a little bit about what that means. Right. You want so to the, try, yeah, the focus again, bar no is uh, sort of represents how your flow in combat and traversal, and then you can can use that for one of two things. You can either use it to instantly take down an enemy, or you can use it to heal. And so it's a little bit of risk reward in the gameplay system okay. that lets your um, basically your performance determine how you want to succeed. Right. Um, so that's that's what you're doing, and you can actually build that up through like acrobatic combat, whether it's using webs, getting into the air, or actually doing uh, cool traversal moves as well, swinging around the open world. So. Rob hasn't taken his eyes off the screen. I don't think Rob, Rob doesn't realize he's on the stage anymore. He's just like sliding <laughs> oh, out. Yeah, do you have any questions for us? <laughs> Can you climb to the top of the Freedom Tower? Yeah. yeah. Can we do it? Not in this Not demo. In this demo. demo. <laughs> it's on the other side of the city, but you have to yeah. can. Empire is Empire State's in this. Yeah, goal, yeah. In this, uh, and also yeah. you can go to yeah. you can go to Avengers Tower as well one. if you yeah. want. You can, you can climb swing. on anything. Yeah, yeah. You can pretty much. There's nothing you can't climb on. Is is the whole of New York like available right from the get go? Can you swing around the whole? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, we send you at to Fisk Tower pretty quickly. Like you're, I mean, the game opens up with you getting a, basically a, an alert that hey. The, we're going after Fist right now. Get right. your butt here, and you start swinging toward it. Then you finish that mission, and the whole city is open to you. Amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah, you can explore it from the, Fantastic. pretty much the minute after you defeat Fist. Yeah, that's one of the things. There's so many things to do in the open world. It's super distracting. Yeah. So every time <laughs> I play the game, I'm trying to test it yep. or check out something, but then I get really, really distracted with the open world, <laughs> and then I never get back to the golden path. Yeah. So. Like, it's awesome. Like I've gone to that point where you know we're 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 coming to the end, right? Where we're we're looking at bugs, but there's times where you just like the, the swinging is so like calming and relaxing. It's yeah. it's it's a point where I, I say this and this means a compliment. You almost take it for granted because it's so easy just to get in the flow of things, and it almost becomes like therapeutic. Like it's relaxing to swing through the city. Um, after a hard day of working, you just Are you trying to, to say making games is stressful, Brian? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> is, that, is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, um, it's like we will continue to work on Traversal till the producers tell us we can't work on it yeah. anymore. Until so. that is it. Guys, yeah. it's got to ship. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the, the colored beams of light we kind of see now and again on the map. I'm assuming they represent things that we can do, but what are those? Particular thing. Oh, the the beams that beams. Yeah. Like, so basically, is you can go to the, like you can hit pause and go to look at the pause menu, right? But like we all we want to keep Spider-Man moving. So you basically just kind of ping the world, and your kind of visors give you a view of all the all the activities in the area. So like the green represents one of Peter's old backpacks, and there's a collectible in there that kind of gives you a little bit more of the history mm -hmm. of his eight years of being Spider-Man. Um, you'll see the um, you'll see red is for the active crimes in the area, um, and then there's ones for basic research stations. So research stations are these quests that you can go on, and they're actually the research stations are actually run by Harry Osborn, your best friend, who's out of town, and he's like, hey Pete, can you swing by? You're a smart guy, can you? <laughs> but he doesn't know you're Spider-Man, so he just thinks you're this smart scientist who's going to solve these problems. But of course, we solve them as Spider-Man. So we have all these, and these are some. These are a handful of the activities. Um, that you uh, you can do in the world. Sorry, I just saw the high five. And, and I was it's like, one of those so things. We just like the, the beams are lighters. Kind of, we want you to be able to get where you want to go quickly without kind of stopping the game. This is amazing. I, I'm a little worried that I think we're coming to the end of our time here on stage. No, no. That's a, and I'm that? not sure it's I want off now. Like oh, now, yeah, we're now, we're, now you got to the shock. Well, now we got to, we're gonna have to carry on, guys, because yeah, I, I need mean, to so, see what happens here. So I mean, this, uh, like I said, we we want to bring a lot of villains to E3. So this is actually the shocker who you meet early on in the game, and of course he. Uh, Thank you. I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> Here's the shocker for you, and. Uh, you know, Shocker is uh, robbing a bank, so we got to uh, take care of business. Classic, classic bad guy movie. Exactly. They don't rob yes. a bank. Yep. Oh, banks in New York City. It's a very fancy bank. <laughs> yeah. It's a very fancy bank. So this is what you call like a boss yeah, battle? Yeah, this would be a boss encounter. So you actually, early on in the game, 
will um, run into Shocker. He actually ha ends up robbing um, somewhere else, and you actually chase him down, and eventually later on, um, he's trying to finish the job, and it's your job to uh, stop him. This looks, it looks... And we'll have, we'll have other villains that we haven't revealed yet as well. Oh, you still, ha still haven't revealed more? Yeah. Even after we, last yeah, night? We didn't, we didn't figure this would be enough, so, uh, you know, we have... Um, again, it's like one of those things you just need, a, you need some great boss fights and a lot of villains to have that true super experience. This is incredible. What do you think? Are we nearing the end of this boss fight, do you reckon? Uh, actually, it's going to probably go on for a little bit. Yeah. Oh. The tougher thing. This is the beauty of the live environment. Yeah, this, oh, God. Oh, this, so good. this is great. I got my own little TV. This is perfect. Yeah, I got it all. Yeah, it, 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 Adam's doing a fantastic doing job so far. It's been really I'm good. So, way. first of all, you're actually playing this right now. Yeah. That's right. And I, I do want to emphasize how yeah, beautiful <laughs> this game is. Oh, thank you. Um, so well, yeah, Brian, hard. tell me a little bit about what you guys want to show us uh, uh, this evening. So, I think, I mean, the big thing is, again, you know, I think the Part of the Spider the Spider Man fantasy is to swing around New York City and you know to have you know not only just a great story but have a bunch of different activities in that world and we want to you know give people who attend E three an opportunity to experience that. So, you know, obviously we it's a big narrative driven experience, but at the same time part of that superhero fantasy, especially that Spider Man experience is living uh, within New York City and seeing that. So um, you know, Adam is one of uh, He's one of our combat pro players because uh, he's a combat designer. And uh, <laughs> again, he's just showing off some really awesome stuff that um, as you get better with the game, obviously, you know, we wanted to have a pick up a play field, but at the same time, have a level of mastery and to really uh, show off the improvisation that we've really been uh, talking about a lot since uh, we announced the game. I'm digging this, like sticking dudes to walls and to the floor and stuff. That looks really, yeah, really satisfying. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing that's been really fun in these last, you know, I would say last six months since uh, we got back from the holidays break was every week I feel like I'll take the game home or I'll be playing one night and then I'll come in and say wow guys I didn't know you could do that so I think is there's a lot of that there's that sandbox nature to it as well so I mean obviously you can you know we have you know we're gonna teach you mechanics but we want you to experiment with you know his acrobatics his webs his gadgets his suit powers so combining all that stuff really allows for a lot of different gameplay and a lot of you know Spider-Man is a very expressive character, and we want players to be able to express that, whether it's in traversal or in combat. It's gorgeous. These animations, sorry, these animations are just blowing my mind. Your, your studio has kind of been renowned for character animation and for, you know, just fluid motion. I mean, did you guys take a lot of lessons from your previous games and really, like, hone in on those when you were developing oh, yeah. I mean, I think animation's definitely been one of the hallmarks of our of our company, you know, from, you know, from Spyro to Ratchet to Sunset Overdrive. Yep. And, I mean, you know, I remember when um, the Sunset Overdrive reviews came out, one person actually wrote, it would be great to see Insomniac make a Spider-Man game. And I was like, see, <laughs> see, we should make it. See? And you I think we you just, waved your phone around it, it, to the whole studio. Exactly. We took that kind of mentality and we just injected our kind of our personality. It, but also, um, you know, what do people want, desire from a Spider-Man experience? So, you know, it was really great as I remember... Um, Probably around the end of the year, uh, in the last year, someone wrote an article about the top things they want to see in Spider-Man, and they said they want to feel like an Insomniac game. So, I think that's the, the thing we've been really layering on in this last year is to have that. Um, it feels like an Insomniac game as much as it does a Spider-Man game. And I love this traversal. I mean, just the fluidity of just moving over great distances very quickly. It looks like a lot of fun just moving around, and that's when you know you've got a great game. Okay, so the, <laughs> okay, the and there, so you know how it kind of said like exper experimenting, but like. Sometimes you know, I mean, game development. You know, we're you know we're you know we're in meetings a lot, and then sometimes you just need to like take a break. And what I used to find myself doing was just swinging around New York City. It was almost like therapeutic. It's just kind of like when I play other games, I just uh, walking or running or um, or even taking a car. It just it feels so more natural now just to swing around, swing around like Spider Man. So it's it's definitely one of those things that has that again, just like combat, that pick and play feel. But we want players to have a level of mastery um, <laughs> as they play and get What better. was that? Hold on a second. I'm very <laughs> interesting what so, you're saying there. So like uh, I said, so Adam showed off, I think he showed off the tripwire. It's basically yep. a gadget that you can either attach to uh, a piece of geometry and the enemies walk by, they'll get like grabbed and sucked back. But you can also attach it to an, an enemy and if an enemy walks by, they kind of slam into each other. That is amazing. This yeah. is so cool. What's this focus meter about? Uh, yeah, so the, the focus meter is basically, it's, there's kind of a, a risk oh. reward. As you build focus, you can use it to he heal. <laughs> Since having a religious it experience. It just looks incredible. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's, the team works really, really hard on it. Really, really hard. Clearly. And the idea is the focus is kind of a way yeah. to 
you can, it's a risk reward. Like I said, you can either heal yourself or you can kind of, um, if you get built, fill up the bar a certain way, you can actually pull off a finishing move. So, you know, as, as you play the game, you kind of say, well, do I want to maybe heal myself real quick or do I want to wait for that really extravagant move to kind of take the guy out instantly? So, Got it. Brian, yeah. a question for you is, uh, obviously Spidey has, as with his experience being under the mask for so many years now. Yep, in, eight in years. Your story, yeah. Eight years. Thank you. You got to be precise. I got it. <laughs> People, the first, one of the first questions I get is, like, is in the origin story? I'm like, no. That was no, like, after we decided that the webs were definitely attached to the buildings, we decided it's not going to be an origin story. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, back to the combat, I mean, Spidey's experience, he has access to a lot of different techniques and technologies. How do you balance out his experience with the fact that you don't want to overwhelm a player with options, right? You want to make it approachable. You know, I, I really, that, that comes down to our, our combat team, our traversal team. Like and this our, guy right here. Like Adam. <laughs> and really going, okay, you know, kind of um, handing that stuff out over the course of the game, you know, finding those right spots where you kind of, okay, we're going to teach you how to punch and how to kick and how to punch guys up in the air and use your webs. But then we lay on, layer on things like gadgets and then the suits and the suit powers. And it's just, it's kind of giving over time. If we just, you know, one thing with something like E3, you know, we want you to feel great. I'm on my way. Bird watching? I saw some pigeons over there. Can't have the ones inside feeling left out. Going down. MJ, I'm at the first location on your list. Guess what I found? Demons? Give the lady a prize. See if you can figure out what they're up to while I introduce myself. You're just not very observant.
Shocker has escaped, and now he's robbing a bank on East 31st. What happened? I thought he was behind bars. He was, but one of the guards just walked up to his cell and released him, then gave him his suit back. I knew Shocker was working for someone. What did you get out of the guard? Wish I could ask him, but he's dead. Whoever made him release Shocker didn't want any loose ends. Damn. Looking at the security footage, the guard was in some kind of trance. And it might have been the lighting, but it looked like his eyes were glowing. Well, that's crazy. Okay, I'll see what I can get out of Shocker when I get to the bank. Herman! Long time no see. Hey, I'm no lawyer, but, uh... I'm pretty sure that's a parole violation. Oops, guess we're stuck in here for a while. Wanna play 20 questions? No? How about we come with Face punch it is. Whoa! Your garlics are all digital now, aren't they? Have it your way! You wanna fight? Let's fight! Man, I can't wait to put you back to the bar so we can talk science. Remember our first fight? Me so young and stupid? You just stupid! You talk so much! Well, that's a matter of opinion. I mean, are there any standard metrics for how much talking one should do? And who determines the ideal ratio of talking versus not talking? Also, how would you measure it? Now I can do some real damage. What are you doing, Miss Herman? Don't, don't kill me! anymore. You're lucky you found actual cash. If you really want to rob banks, try daydream. It's all the rage. Oh, come on, Herman. Not even sure these guys are people. Could be anything under those masks. Wait, did you say masks? Okay, 
guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button leave a comment down below and um, please subscribe